Amanda, what is going on? Hey, Keith. Where in the world are you? <laughs> I am parked right now. Otherwise, I would be uh, texting and driving, which is illegal in Indiana. There I guess is. Since I, <laughs> since I hit the road, they changed those rules. Thanks for being safe and thanks for following the rules. <laughs> That's, I've been known to be a rule follower. <laughs> well, uh, this little mini series that we're doing is called On the Road Again. And uh, you're in a car, you are on the road, but thankfully you're parked. And when I think of On the Road Again, I think of Shrek. And when Donkey starts singing On the Road Again, On the Road Again, I can't wait to get back on the road again. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right. And uh, those old people like me, we think of Willie Nelson when we hear that. And uh, so, yeah, I've, I've, I've been on the road a few times and I got this gift this week. Somebody gave me this uh, um, pillow and it, uh, I don't know if you can see that right there. It says, begin historic route 66, I think is what it says there. I no, sure that says do. Texas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's the begin part right there. Begin route 66. Uh, okay. and our, uh, our family's first major road trip. We left uh, Indianapolis in a rented RV, went to Chicago, saw that sign begin historic route 66 in Illinois and pointed that bad boy Southwest. And, and we were on the road again and uh, it was quite an adventure. Do you, do you, what do you know about route 66? You know anything about that? Honestly, not much. I just know it stretches a long distance in our country. <laughs> According to my pillow here, it uh, it is 24, I don't know if you can see that, 2,448 miles. Okay. Uh, and it starts in Chicago and ends in Santa Monica. The mileage, um, the mileage isn't really the, the factual thing of it because it, it started back in 1926 is when Route 66 started. There wasn't an interstate system. There wasn't a real easy mechanism for somebody to get in a car because cars were relatively new anyway and to get from the east to the west. And so this Route 66 was a combination of different roads between Chicago and Los Angeles. And then as time went on, they, they kind of made the road smoother. They made them straighter and so the mileage always changed because they they would have had like the the 1926 version of route 66 and maybe a 1942 version but by the mid 1950s it was the thing that's where that's how traffic was going there were roadside um, motels restaurants there was all kinds of commerce along route 66 and then uh that was the mid 50s was coming out of world war ii and Dwight Eisenhower saw in Germany how efficient the Audubon was. And so he came up with the idea of putting a grid in place called the interstate system so that you could transfer military personnel pretty efficiently across the U.S. So your east-west interstates end with a zero and your north-south ones end with a five. And so uh, they, they start at 10 on the, you know, down in the south and then work their way up to 90 in the north. And then there's all kinds of variations that go diagonally like I-69 out of uh, Canada down to Mexico and things like that. So that all unfolded. But as that was going on, the uh, local diners were sitting there serving up all these construction workers doing their thing and uh, never occurred to them that the, the new road just maybe a quarter of a mile, half mile, two miles away would soon redirect all the traffic away from the diner. And so, uh, the, the, the commerce dropped off, the restaurants went out of business, the hotels, motels went out of business. A lot of things happened uh, from, the, from the heyday of the mid-1950s until it was officially decommissioned um, by the, the highway department back in 1985. And so that's Route 66. It's a really cool place to go explore what life was about, probably in the 90s and beyond people started pouring money back into those communities. I think the foodies like going to those small restaurants along the way. There's one in Pontiac, Illinois called The Cabin. That's really cool to go to if you're ever floating around. Uh, if you don't want to drive directly up I-65 to Chicago, Pontiac's got a cool one there. <laughs> that's awesome. So you did that route, 66, with your family in 2006, right? I don't know if you mentioned that or not. Yeah, so that, 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 that was... <laughs> that was our first, that was our first trip. So it was impressive. It was, um, 
lot of young kids, a lot of chaos and a lot of small space and, and we survived it. But yeah, that was our first major road trip as a family. That's wonderful. And, and is uh, road tripping your preferred route of transportation when you go on your adventures? Uh, it, it was while we were raising kids. I don't know right now. Well, I mean, with COVID, it definitely yeah. is. But, <laughs> Makes it easy. But, yeah. And so we, uh, we decided to go to a road trip in uh, July. And our original plan was to point our RV out towards uh, Maine and go explore someplace north where it was a little cooler. And the uh, government of Maine decided that you had to have a COVID negative test within 72 hours of arriving. And uh, we just didn't see logistically how we could do that. So we redirected our plans towards Montana. And it's just a picture of economics of how capital is always being deployed, redeployed, reconsidered. And, um, and traveling gives you those you know, observations of what's going on in culture. So we had that opportunity. And it sounds like Montana's gain was Maine's loss. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think uh, I was talking to a, a friend a while ago, and and um, they had a similar experience. Somebody was wanting to go to Cape Cod, and they had similar parameters there. So, as we uh, uh, started making our way across the country, the RV broke down, and so we <laughs> came back and ended up renting a car. And I just see even that as kind of economics is that in in traditional financial planning. Everybody wants to have this finite plan that's going to go as planned. And, and having helped families with their finances for so long, I know that it seldom goes as planned. And so having a flexible attitude, not only with your finances, but in travel is a big deal, I think. Totally. And I think, like you just mentioned, being able to hop in a car, hop in an RV and kind of take your life with you, um, you have that flexibility to kind of mix it up, change it up. Um, and it's all about the um, journey versus the actual destination. That's, that's exactly right, Amanda. And on this particular trip, I, I made a lot of observations. We, we drove about 5,000 miles in the rental wow. car. And so I had a lot of windshield time, a lot of time to observe kind of activities that were going on. And it's, it's the perfect time if anybody wants to go on a short road trip because gas prices are cheap and opportunities are out there. Indeed. And I even took a small trip over the 4th of July weekend up to Wisconsin and driving on the, inter on the interstate, I noticed the amount of bikes that were on the backs of people's cars, the trailers that were hooked up, um, tool packaging or storage up top. People are, they're getting out there. They're still doing things. They're going on adventures, um, all driving distance away. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's just a lot you can do. We did a more extravagant one in the on our trip and and yeah you could you could I think I would encourage people even during this COVID to get out and at least do a Sunday afternoon drive if you're not doing anything else just to get some sunshine and get some fresh air but if you've got a couple of days it's a perfect time to do it well like one there, there's a couple of the, the entertainment or the hospitality industry is what I want to kind of talk about today is like the hotels uh, out on the road were very, very inexpensive. You can get just about any, <coughs> excuse me, any kind of ordinary hotel right now for close to $100 a night. That's not um, the high end hotels, but that's pretty good hotels for right around $100. We saw that most everywhere we went. We were looking on Priceline. Uh, we also noticed that Airbnb was a lot more expensive this year than in other times. And I think that, that might have something to do with the COVID as well. Pe maybe people feel that maybe a house has been cleaned better. Or there's less traffic going through there. So, so, but the, definitely the hotels are um, really a, a bargain out there right now. That's and, awesome. and yeah, along with that, the restaurants, that's really been an interesting thing to watch. The restaurants are very competitive industry and boy, they have got a tough time out there. The, the, the restaurants with a smaller footprint like a Domino's, which just um, makes the pizza and ships them out, have a definite advantage over someplace like an Outback Steakhouse that um, has to do the social distancing. And so we noticed that some of those kind of restaurants like Outbacks were putting tents outside. And with those tents, they were taking up some of the parking lot. But uh, without that, there weren't many cars in the parking lot anyway. Right. Um, we dined at a Red Lobster that the 
waitress told me that between March and May, they had uh, two managers that ran the restaurant. That was it. They did the opening, the closing, they took the orders, they cooked wow. it, they rang up the orders and they delivered it out to the car with the you know, packaging. And, and to me, that that's unbelievable how that they could keep that business going with that model. Um, we noticed uh, a Culver's restaurant, that's kind of a fast food restaurant, one of the ones in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, uh, they had gone to some sporting goods store, I suppose, and bought a uh, deer stand and we were using that as a, a kind of mimicking the Chick-fil-A's uh, two lanes of drive through is what they were doing. So there's a lot of creativity to keep those things going. The uh, a lot the farther west we went and I noticed that once we got back to Indiana is that fewer and fewer restaurants are using menus anymore so old timers like me uh, we have to learn to use our phones to even order inside a restaurant anymore and um, just a lot of creative things are going on and and it'll be really curious to see how all this unfolds in the the weeks and months ahead with the with particularly the hospitality industry but that's what we've observed this time on the road. Any other questions about the road? No, I think we're good. That sounds like a lot of opportunity and a lot of, um, yeah, like you just said, creativity for people to, to make changes because we've got to do that. And I'm encouraged to get out on the road. <laughs> well, let me know tip. when you get ready to hit it and we'll see, uh, we'll get you on here and talk to you about your road trips. Will do. Plan Have a it. great afternoon, Amanda. Thanks. You too, Keith. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.